total of about 11 participants right now, and we're just admitting them in. We'll give them a couple of minutes to continue coming through. Thanks guys for joining. It's nice to see everyone again. Long time no see. <laughs> oh, and Karen's on here too. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna share the screen. Um, give me one second here. Okay. Awesome. I'll give it a couple of minutes, maybe at like 105 and then we can start. Oh, I'm seeing notebooks and pens and papers. This is awesome. <laughs> oh, Ruby, oh my goodness, I muted you. Hold on. Give me one second. Um, unmute. There we go. Nope, hold on. Unmute. Hello, Ruby. Okay. Oh, hey. Awesome. Sorry, we're both trying to unmute it, and I think we were. I think we were both clicking at the same time. <laughs> we were each other. Okay, hold on. Let me see. Um, let's manage the participants. We have Carlina who's joining us. One last one, and awesome. Okay. Oh, I'm just being asked uh, for the Zoom code, so I'm just going to send it over quickly. Okay, so I wanted to start off by first and foremost thanking, um, you know, Honorable Mrs. Ruby Sahoda, who's re-elected Member of Parliament for Brampton North. Thank you so much for joining us. We're really grateful for you taking the time today to answer all of our questions. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well, Karen. It's a pleasure to be on today. And uh, thank you for organizing this Zoom session. It's really important. And hopefully we can make this uh, a regular thing and I can update oh. you about different government policies and plans that are coming out. Um, yeah, and I, I'm, I'm grateful for being here. Hello, Welcome to everybody. Good afternoon. And uh, I hope that I will be able to answer most of your questions today. Awesome. Okay, so I, I like the idea of this being a regular thing. So um, I'll take, I'll, I'll jot that down. <laughs> um, before we get started, I definitely wanted to go over some quick housekeeping rules. Um, now there's three simple, oh, sorry, I'm just gonna admit somebody else. Give me one second. Mm -hmm. So there's just three simple, um, courteous and mindful rules that I would like for all, to us, uh, for all of us to adhere to. Number one, this is a safe space, so let's please be respectful and be kind. Um, anybody who is uh, potentially going to, you know, not be so nice will be removed from the Zoom. Secondly, we are recording this Zoom call so that any of the Open for Business Brampton community members who weren't able to meet us will have access to the information as well. And finally, number three, and most importantly, is feel free to ask all of your questions. The goal is to have an open discussion so that you guys can have your um, questions answered and get clarity on anything that you might be uncertain about. So let's move on here. Thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Ruby Sahoda. Like I had mentioned, she is re-elected Member of Parliament for Brampton North, and she's doing great things within the entrepreneur um, community. She is the co-chair of the All-Party Entrepreneurs Caucus, and she's passionate about helping out all the small businesses within our community. I know that uh, she had mentioned these are the particular topics that we're going to be going over. Um, these mainly these five different benefits that are out there for all of us to access. Uh, so Ruby, did you want to maybe uh, give everybody a little bit of more information about what these all entail? Uh, yeah, I definitely want to leave uh, a lot of time for questions because I think that's quite important. Uh, I've noticed that although uh, 
a lot of this is being spoken of with the Prime Minister's daily briefings and with the media and then uh, the different ministers. There are still questions and nuances that are, that are coming up and even we're learning from some of these questions and being able to fix programs and respond accordingly. So the feedback that we've been getting from the community is really important. Uh, in terms of providing support for individuals and for businesses, uh, you know, this is a pandemic and we in our lifetime have never seen anything like this. And uh, I think for most people that are alive today uh, have not been in a pandemic uh, such as this. Uh, I do also feel that um, we are responding to it better than we probably ever were capable of doing before. Uh, our healthcare systems are, are stronger as time has gone on. Um, we have better plans in place. We have organizations, uh, whether they're global um, or national, in place to, to help us deal with these issues. <clears throat> Uh, first off, uh, the government uh, really wanted to figure out, um, you know, just like you, we were learning as the science was coming out about how this was going to evolve and how long this could probably take. And so from some of the few of the initial measures you can see, most of the things have been rolled out in four month periods. And at that time, the prime minister was uh, very clear in stating that this was our um, it was the Canada Emergency Response Benefit that was one of the first programs that was rolled out. Uh, and the reason being is because this was direct supports to individuals, uh, regardless if they owned a small business or had a job, uh, this would directly go to individuals and we wanted to make sure that people uh, were supported and were able to purchase the basic necessities of life, food, uh, and make sure that they had some money to maybe perhaps uh, keep their rents going uh, and make payments for shelter. Uh, so that was the very first thing. But when we rolled that out, we said that this was just going to be the first phase. And as this evolves, we're going to figure out um, ways to support our businesses in the future so that we can rebalance or rebound back uh, and make sure our economy is in a good place after the pandemic is over. Uh, so, first of all, I, I think this is the one that also most people are familiar with. It's the CERB, the Canada Emergency Response Benefit. It's a $2,000 benefit that some people have perhaps received two payments of already. Uh, it was made available um, starting in April, but it was retroactive to March 15th. And so people would have seen two benefit payments um, of this at this point if they applied in the first stage. Of course, you're eligible to apply whenever the situation, uh, whenever a situation arises that you find yourself making less than $1,000. Uh, so this is for people who have a reduced income or have no income. Uh, when we first rolled it out, it was only for those that had no income. But quickly, we realized that there were a lot of people that were um, in a position where they were uh, their income was reducing and we needed to figure out how to support those people as well without putting them in a situation where they had to make a difficult choice of quitting um, just because they made a few hundred dollars and, and that was making them ineligible. So that's $2,000 and if you do make up to $1,000, you're still eligible uh, and, and you would therefore keep whatever you make that's under that $1,000 amount and still get the $2,000. Uh, you do have to be a worker for this this benefit is strictly for workers. It is not for those that uh, were unemployed. Um, if you were unemployed and receiving EI benefits, however, your EI benefits would roll into the CERB. And even if you're out of EI uh, benefits at this time or at some point in the weeks coming, uh, you're gonna run out of your EI eligible hours or benefits, then you'll still continue to receive this support uh, for the meantime to hold you over. Uh, the Canada Emergency Business Account. Now that's one that uh, I've received a lot of feedback uh, from small businesses on. It seems like everyone is interested in getting this. Uh, it's a two year interest free uh, a loan of $40,000 where 25% 25, uh, 25 of the loan can be forgivable. So that's about $10,000 of that loan um, could become a forgivable portion and then therefore you'd only have to pay back the 30,000. And uh, you don't have to pay it back in two years, but uh, 
the interest free portion of the deal does end in two years. And then after that, you would be paying interest on the loan. Uh, it is at a reduced interest rate though. So it's still quite, uh, quite a good deal. Okay. This you have to count, uh, contact your banks for. So it's government backed, but it's provided through your bank, um, whoever you do your business banking with. Most of all the big, um, big banks are providing relief for this. Um, the Canada Emergency Commercial Rent Assistance. Now, there are still questions about this because it is a very new grant that we have just, um, that we've just signed in principle with uh, the provinces. And so all of the provinces and territories in Canada have signed on to some form of uh, this commercial rent, rent assistance. This is a big piece of the puzzle. I, I do think that for those businesses that are not, um, eligible for the $40,000 business account because there is um, a criteria uh, to that account, uh, to receiving that 40,000, which is having payroll in your business of 20,000 to up to 1.5 million. So for those businesses that don't have that 20,000 payroll or above, um, they're saying, why not us? We don't take payroll out. We're, we're talking about the dry cleaners, the convenience stores, and uh, some of those people that are reaching out. But when I do talk to those people, they do tell me that their biggest cost is their salary, their staff, and, mm -hmm. and their rent, their commercial rent. So those are the two big costs that um, are making it very difficult for them at this time. And so therefore there are programs that they're still eligible for, even though the 40,000 may not be available to them because they don't have that 20,000 minimum of payroll, they can still apply for the Canada Wage Subsidy Program, which uh, just started earlier last week. Uh, this Wage Subsidy Program, I believe this Monday, uh, so it's Friday now, it started on Monday, and uh, you can go to Canada.ca to apply for that. Um, you may need some help from your, your business accountant, maybe for you to be able to show um, how your revenues have dropped, because you do need to show that in the month of March, your revenues decreased by 15%, and then in um, the subsequent months, uh, at least 30%. Uh, so that is very important. This is for businesses to help support them. So there has to have been a change in their circumstance, just like with any of these benefits. I am getting a lot of calls for, from people that you know may not be showing a decrease in revenue or a decrease in their income, um, and maybe they're making $1,500 for that individual, um, about the individual benefit, I'm saying, or 2,000, and, and that maybe never have been enough for them, you know, or there's businesses right always struggling and so we definitely are having those types of businesses reach out and say saying what's in it for me um i've been struggling even before covid19 <laughs> and i'm continuing to struggle after covid19 uh, unfortunately uh, you know as much as as much as um as much as we want to support all people and all businesses uh really right now these programs are geared to help uh, give a helping hand to those that have um, that were used to a certain revenue uh, and therefore have certain expenses and all of a sudden that revenue has dropped of course we, we we're still not able to keep them whole uh, this is also not about keeping businesses at the exact same revenue they were always at or keeping an individual at the exact same pay level they were at it is just about getting them through this right. And, and so that's, that's what it's really about. Uh, it's trying to make sure that businesses don't have to shut their doors. Uh, they may have to still reduce the number of employees they have. They may have to reduce you know, other expenses that they may have. Um, but it's trying just to make sure that we can keep them afloat through this period. Um, and then we've got, uh, so the wage subsidy there, that was the 75% that just opened up this Monday. I think that's where I left off and all businesses, whether they're charity sector, uh, not for profit, for profit businesses are eligible for that. So, uh, and it doesn't matter the size of your business, doesn't matter if you have one employee or you have thousands, uh, you can apply for the 75% wage subsidy. So I really encourage uh, businesses to look at that. It will really help you out. And although we encourage businesses to pay the other 25% uh, to their employees, if they can, there is no, uh, there are no strings attached. And so if a business is unable to do so, 
uh, then, then you can pay just what you're receiving from the government. Mm -hmm. uh, and it does have a, a cap on it though, uh, not in terms of how much money each business can receive. Each business will receive uh, for as many employees as uh, they're eligible but, or that they have. But they will not, I mean, if they're paying their employees uh, a very high salary, then unfortunately that employee at this time will have to take a pay cut because this only covers up to, uh, I believe, $847 a week so, uh, of salary. So if your employees were making under that, then of course they would only be getting 75% of the women making higher to 19. Those are making over that, they, they too would just be cut off at that level. Uh, so, and then we've got finally the, the student fund. Um, so the Canada Emergency Student Benefit, it's called. Uh, that is a new uh, legislation that just got passed in the House this Wednesday. I believe the Senate still has yet to pass it. There was a little bit of a change made to this program. Um, and uh, basically the, the change that was made, I'm getting some notes in here in the chat. I'll take that. A yeah, Karen's taking care of that. <laughs> Thank you, yeah, Karen. I'll take, take a look at that later. But uh, the student subsidy is, is a really huge program. And uh, it's, a, it's a very exciting program. It's got many aspects to it. It's not just a benefit. The benefit is twelve fifty, though. For those of you that want to know, this is for students. There's no um, requirement to have made $5,000 in the year prior like there is for the CERB. For workers. Uh, in this case, the policy reason behind this benefit really is to make sure that come fall semester, we still have our students enrolling in school. We don't have a, a bit, a huge dropout rate. Uh, there were students that rely on summer jobs in order to have pocket money or to make tuition payments in the coming year. But there are also those students that perhaps were getting helped by their families. So they maybe didn't have income from the years prior, but their families have been hit up hard right now too. And so perhaps their parents might not be able to help them make tuition this year, like what they're used to. And so that is really why there's not a lot of um, eligibility criteria for this, other than the fact that you need to be an enrolled student. Uh, mm -hmm. So for those that are new students going into school post-secondary for the first time, they would be eligible. Those okay. students, sorry, yeah, Karen? No, I just said, oh, wow. I, even for the ones that are, that are registering for September, like that are approved? Yeah, okay. so as long as you've been enrolled and uh, you've been accepted to a school and you are approved because I'm assuming that uh, they, after graduating from high school, it was the summer months that usually students try to find for, look for those summer jobs and uh, to make some income before their school year. Uh, or, you know, just like I said, the parents are also having a hard time right now in order to support their students. So yes, it is for them. It's also for those that graduated in December of 2019. Uh, and it's for all those that are in between their school semesters as well. But this is not just a benefit. We also have, um, there's two portions to this benefit. One is for the single student, that's $1,250, $1,250, and one is for the students that have dependents. Students that are disabled or have dependents, uh, the wage uh, has increased, uh, the benefit has increased from what we originally had it at, which was $1,750. I, I believe uh, after some negotiations with the other parties, what's ended up happening since Wednesday is that it is also $2,000. So those students that have a dependent or uh, have a disability will get $2,000. And this is for, four, for a four month period for May, uh, June, July, and August. Uh, we also are creating uh, with our different industry partners about 76,000 jobs for students in areas and in, in the sectors that um, are some some that are in frontline working jobs in healthcare and others that are producing equipment such as PPE and, and other things to respond to COVID-19. Uh, agriculture area is also one of them because we need to keep our uh, supply chains going as well and, and a lot of students in, in rural communities and across this country do help out uh, in the agricultural industry. Uh, I know here in Brampton, we don't think very much, uh, you know, about that side of things, but it's a real big need in, in some provinces. And so uh, finally, what I would say is there's also the Canada Summer Jobs Program, uh, which has had some changes. So if you are all businesses, um, then 
if you either were approved for the Canada Summer Jobs Program, the way it works is that an employer gets a certain amount of money to hire students. Um, and it used to be so that employers that were in the not-for-profit sector used to get 100% of a student's salary to pay them for the summer months. Um, and the private sector would get 50% of a student's salary uh, to hire them for the summer months. But we've extended this program and we're also gonna open it up uh, to new people that are eligible. So you have to contact Service Canada for this. Um, the program runs through Service Canada and it's going to be extended until February 28th of 2021. So it's not just for the summer anymore. It's going to be um, going until this coming February. And uh, the change that we've made is it's not only for the not-for-profit sector now, even businesses for profit can get 100% of their students' salary paid. Uh, so this is a good program uh, to look into and to contact Service Canada about because uh, there's a lot of the pre-approved ones from last February. This program usually has applications every February, every year. And so definitely look into that. If you're not in a spot to really be taking on students right now, it's okay. Uh, there will be a new program rolling out next year. So we want to also not just think about this time period, but also beyond it, right? So uh, that's just some information for you. You can always contact me, my office, uh, to get more information on that program if you're interested now or interested in the future years to come. It's a really great program, gives students a lot of experience, um, and it also gives employers a helping hand during the summer months. And, and I know a lot of not-for-profits have been able to hire students to help them plan for the year ahead uh, during the summer months. So that's one program and uh, there's a whole bunch of other things we're doing in terms of deferring loans, um, making loans that uh, students are eligible for in the coming year uh, a little bit more flexible, doubling uh, the Canada Student Grants Program, uh, and also um, there's going to be um, a benefit that is for students that volunteer. Uh, so that's a new benefit that has been created. And so you'll see some of those details roll out uh, as well. So those students that are volunteering already um, or those that we can incentivize to volunteer in their communities now at their food banks, uh, local shelters and various other places that are in need of volunteers, they too can get up to $5,000 uh, of a student grant towards their school education. So a whole bunch of things in that program, but I want to open it up at this point. Uh, I think I've spoken quite a bit. <laughs> and let's take on some questions and have some conversation. Awesome. Okay, so thank you very much for clarifying some of that. Um, I am going to so just to, to remind everybody, I, I see some people have been asking questions in the chat and we'll get to those as well. Um, I would highly encourage that you guys use the feature to raise your hand so that I, I can see your hand and then I will unmute you to ask the question and then you'll, you'll be put back on mute. Um, but before going to those particular questions, I'm gonna address the questions that were asked within the focus group. And then we'll open it up to everybody else, just in case so that there's like a process of elimination. Um, we're not doubling up on questions, but of course, feel free if something is still not clear to you, raise your hand and we'll uh, give you the opportunity to ask the question as well. So the first question we have here, Ruby, is who is eligible to qualify for the CERB program? Now, I know you had mentioned the details about it, um, but just in, in maybe a sentence or two, who, who would that be available to? So you had to have been a worker. Uh, that's key. Uh, if you weren't a worker, then it's not, this program is not for you. You have to have had lost your job or have your hours decreased uh, to now only making a thousand dollars a month and then you could be eligible as well. Uh, the criteria for having lost a job is, um, you know, Perhaps you're still working, but your employer is not able to pay you anymore. Uh, that qualifies as well for CERB. Uh, perhaps you have to tell your employer that you're unable to work because your kids are now at home from school and you're having to stay at home. That would qualify you for CERB. Um, perhaps you have had to self-quarantine yourself for 14 days because you have traveled and therefore you're unable to go back to work. That would qualify you for CERB and you're not receiving pay, of course, or uh, your pay is under $1,000 now as a result. 
Um, perhaps you're having to take care of a, a, a sick loved one, family member, that would also qualify you for CERB. Uh, and, and lastly, you have to have had made at least $5,000 of income in the prior 12 months or in your uh, last year's tax return. I, either will do if you don't have it in your last year's tax return, but you do think you'll be able to prove it um, in the months of um, you know, prior to March and that 12 month period, you had that income of $5,000, then, then you are eligible. We kept this threshold really low so that a lot, I mean, I think most people who are working people probably have more than $5,000 in income in the prior year. Um, let's hope if they really are working regularly, but um, we wanted to make sure that we fit as many people as possible and sometimes there are those things people that just started working a, a little while ago for the first time and then lost their job um, and this is gives us the ability to catch them in the CERB as well. Awesome, thank you. Um, so then we have Amisha who asked, as a new business owner, I don't qualify for CERB, so what are the alternative options available? I know that you had mentioned uh, the loan capability. Um, but I, I did feel like that was one of the biggest questions asked. Like, if I don't qualify, what am I going to do? Like, what are my options? Well, a new business owner would qualify for the wage subsidy because there is, well, uh, we did make a change to the wage subsidy program. Uh, originally, when it was first proposed, you were supposed to compare March's revenues to last year's revenues in okay. order to show that revenue decrease. Of, okay. Uh, 15% in the, well, it was 30. At the very beginning when it was proposed, it was supposed to be a 30% revenue decrease. What we did was uh, in order to help businesses, because we know, you know, a lot of these restrictions only went into place come mid-February, uh, mid-March. Right. And so perhaps a lot of businesses would not be able to show that 30% decrease in revenues for that month. So we made it 15% for the month, month of March and then uh, for subsequent months uh, back to the 30%. Also for new startups, uh, that was the big issue as well. Uh, they said they weren't in business for a year, right? So they wouldn't be able to compare to last year's revenues. They can compare starting in January. So a lot of new startups would be able to compare like unless you really opened up your business a week or two before all of this happened which some people did and i have gotten contacted by those people which is really unfortunate um uh, i think that is a scenario where, where you're not eligible at that time um yes you may have made a really huge investment into your business um but you may need to look out for um perhaps some other things that may help you. CERB, however, uh, that was the way you phrased it. Most business owners would be eligible for CERB for themselves at least. So if you're running a business, these other programs are in order for you to support your employees and to support your rent. Uh, but the CERB program for individuals, that applies to everyone. That applies okay. to self-employed, uh, if you had a job with somebody else, uh, it applies to people who are business owners themselves. So that's really important to know. Um, and I know that's not going to help you keep your business afloat $2,000, but it will at least hopefully help you keep yourself um, with, the, with the basic needs that you, that you need to survive as an individual. Awesome. Thank you very much for that. Um, okay, so the next question is from Diana, and she said, are pregnant women eligible for CERB? If not, again, what are the alternative options that they might have? So I guess okay. I know it goes back to depending on where they were prior to, mm -hmm. but I'll, I can, I'll let you answer. Absolutely, they are. We are getting a lot of this question, so it kind of depends. I mean, right now in the question all i know is the person is pregnant right so i don't know whether they were employed uh whether they were receiving ei benefits uh for their pregnancy and if they were receiving ei benefits uh uh for their pregnancy then those benefits will continue during this time um so yes if you were a worker uh then then you would be eligible um but if, if you are pregnant and you were not a worker, then no, this is, this is not uh, a benefit for you right now. Awesome. Thank you. Then I had, um, hold on here. Give me one second. I had Peter and Amisha had uh, similar questions and they wanted to know mainly how does the CERB 
um, the, the benefits impact us for next year's tax reporting season. So will we have a separate document just kind of like uh, OSAP does? And how will that get taxed on the benefits being received currently? Yeah, uh, this will be included in your total income for the year. So um, they will be taxed just like you are taxed on your individual income. Um, the, the business side of it, of course, will have uh, different business implications and you can contact your, your business accountants for that, but uh, you'll be taxed at the same uh, the same way we always are. Well, there was a choice, right? Even at the beginning, uh, I believe when we were talking about serve in, in the very initial stages, you were hearing that $1,800 was going to be the benefit. Uh, I think there was uh, some talk and thinking about that in government and we have we have uh, meetings every single day on a lot of these issues to hash them out that we need to make sure that we're not deducting, uh, we're not making any source deductions at this time and we're giving everyone the money up front uh, right now so that they have the max benefit because they're mostly in, they're in need right now. Uh, and then we can worry about the tax period next year when that comes later. Um, income is gonna take a hit for a lot of people uh, this time around and so, you know, I. I do, other than those high income earners, I don't think it's going to have a really you know, negative impact on those people uh, if they're going to see a decrease in their income altogether. Uh, they're probably going to be paying less in taxes than they usually would have. Oh, really? Okay. Um, okay, so let me move on to the next slide. And Alia asked, um, how is the handmade community being assisted through um, these particular programs? I know that somebody in specific had referenced uh, certain benefits that were that were launched through the Toronto um, area, specifically catered for handmade for the handmade community. Um, I try to you know look up some of these um, more information to get to be able to present that to you, but I think that um, it was a little hard finding it. So I figured I'd leave the question there and, and just uh, see what, what you, your thoughts are on this. Um, so I guess they, they ran a business where they were producing handmade goods and items. Is, is that yes. what the handmade community is? Yeah, um, yeah okay. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it, they would be eligible just like any small business. Uh, I'm imagining though that uh, perhaps they don't suffer from having uh, renting out a space. Perhaps they do. I, I don't know. Like it really depends on what their situation is, right? So are yeah. they needing to cover rent or are they doing this work from home? Um, my thinking is that most likely they're probably doing it from home. Uh, and in that case, they don't have as much overhead as a lot of other businesses would. So they may not also have payroll, which makes them not eligible for the Canada emergency business account for 40,000. Um, really, uh, they would have had to have paid some taxes in their income tax last year. So if they weren't showing any income uh, in the prior year, then they're out of luck for SERB because they really haven't contributed to, uh, to taxes in showing their income. But if they were, if they were claiming, uh, you know, a, an income of at least $5,000 in, in the 12 months prior, then they're at least eligible for CERB, C, E, or B. Okay, awesome. Sandy asks if you already opted for, okay, so there was um, a benefit that you guys were offering prior to um, implementing CERB that was catered to the strike day. I believe it was a pay of $200 for parents for daycares, uh, for the situation with the daycare. Um, she had asked, what happens if you haven't received that lump sum amount? Will it be absorbed through CERB? Hmm. No, so those are two programs that run uh, separately. Okay. Uh, one is a provincial program and uh, one is a federal program. So your okay. service is getting processed either through the CRA or through Service Canada. Uh, for those that were eligible for employment insurance, their service is getting processed through Service Canada. And for those that are self-employed, then their service is probably being processed through the Revenue Canada Agency. These two agencies are working together to now cross-reference um, all of their 
um, benefits that they've given out. This is why we've had some problems of uh, double benefits going out because people pay, people applied in both areas. So double benefits did go up to some people. Um, if they were the exact same benefit, then hold on to that benefit. That's all I can say for now. We do have, you can contact my office. We do have the information of how you can pay it back. But I would say for now, until the four month period uh, is not over, just hold on to it because they may, um, they may not give you one of those four month uh, payments. So you're eligible for $8,000 in total, four months of 2000. And if uh, you, they just cut you off at 6,000, then you, know, you end up with that double payment and everything works out and, and you haven't been overpaid. But if you end up with $10,000 at the end of it, you know you've got a, a $2,000 overpayment and uh, you can return that. Uh, in terms of that, the $200, that's, that's all provincial. And so I, I um, I would say contact your MPP or contact Service Ontario uh, to find out um, uh, about that. But nothing will be um, adjusted from the 200 to the CERB. It, they're in, no not, overlap. There's no overlap. There's no connection okay. from different sources. Awesome. Okay, um, then there was another question, uh, very similar from Rob and Alia, and they're they're they want to get a, bit, a better understanding as to how you guys are looking to roll out um, post, or sorry, the Canadian Emergency Commercial Rent Assistance. I know that that was just launched over the weekend. Um, if you can just, I know you mentioned it earlier, but I know that that was something that's very pressing for people, um, specifically the ones that have a storefront. Yeah. So, so this benefit is, um, you're probably not going to be able to apply. It's going to be the landlords applying for the loan. Okay. Uh, uh, a portion of this loan is forgivable um, for landlords that are accommodating their tenants and helping their tenants out at this time. Uh, so you heard a little bit about that a few, a few weeks before. We wanted to make sure we were incentivizing and, and letting landlords know that if they make a deal with their tenants, uh, and we're hoping, I know some landlords are really tough, but we're hoping that most landlords want to keep their tenants and not have to look for new tenants after this. And so they're, they're going to be flexible and working uh, with their tenants. But this is not gonna roll out until about mid-May. Uh, so we have a few more weeks uh, to fine tune some of these details. Right now, as it stands, um, the landlord would be given 50% of um, three months, I believe uh, April, May, June uh, of rent for their tenants. So 50% of the rent they would regularly co collect if they are willing to forego 75% uh, of a discount to their tenant in rent. Um, so I know that's it's quite complicated. Um, I know some landlords are already looking at how to do this. Um, so you would be still up. I guess on the hook, uh, so to speak, if your landlord was to be able to get this for 25% of your rent payment and 75% would be forgiven by the landlord. Uh, I think that's where I'm, I'm most comfortable keeping it at, at this point uh, because we are daily trying to massage this program a little bit uh, before it rolls out in May. Uh, and just know that it will be retroactive. So, you know, for those rent payments that you haven't been able to make since April, it will be retroactive to that, even though uh, it's only going to roll out in a couple of weeks. Okay, thank you. Um, and then we have also, how does the government plan on phasing back into the opening of the businesses? Yeah, that, that very much is a provincial question. I, I think uh, we really have in this country, uh, I think a lot better than in some countries, uh, have been able to take a province to province uh, approach on this because what, what's true in the Atlantic provinces and our territories is not true to Ontario and Quebec, right? So yeah. they have to take a different approach depending on where uh, they're at in this pandemic. And we heard from Doug Ford, our, our premier here in Ontario, and I'm assuming most of your, uh, the people on this call today are from Ontario. Can, yes. is, is that? <laughs> all right, so all Ontario-based people. So uh, Doug Ford did give a, a plan uh, of a rollout, uh, which didn't really uh, give the details to exactly what businesses would be in which phase. Uh, I think they too were trying to figure that out, but um, basically, uh, from what I saw on, on the charts that they did release is each phase would be approximately 
would take two to four weeks. So it's going to be a really slow rollout, right? Um, you're going to be looking at this for months to come uh, where businesses slowly start. And of course, at the very um, in the initial stage, it's going to be only be those businesses that are able to keep social distancing measures in place uh, while operating their business, and it's not going to be the malls or the really crowded social places. Um, in terms of the federal government and how we're viewing this is uh, we have the Prime Minister and the Deputy Minister has calls uh, almost daily and weekly uh, for the Prime Minister, but daily, I believe, with uh, Christia Freeland, with the different premiers, in order to uh, coordinate some of this stuff. And what we're going to do is, from the federal level, the Health Canada and our health officials will be giving recommendations for the provinces to follow. And these recommendations are going to not so much be what can you open when, uh, but what you can't do until certain things happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so that basically from a health standpoint, they're going to be able to say, well, until your province is at, um, and these are recommendations, until your province reaches a certain stage in the pandemic, uh, indicated by certain um, targets that they've reached, you should not be opening, you know, mm. anything or you should not be um, going into phase two of your opening. So I think it's going to be very much of a just a guideline that all provinces can, can be uh, doing this um, fairly uh, consistently with each other uh, because we do have interprovincial travel to some degree still and um, that's another topic of concern if provinces uh, are really uh, taking these stages at a different you know have drastic differences between how they reopen okay um so i do have now some questions from the chat um we have lisa who i'm just gonna unmute she's she's raised her hand Hi, how are you? Hi, Lisa. Hi, Ruby. I had a question. So I like recently opened a business account, uh, like a business, and um, it started really picking up in February. And then I had like, it, my March was all planned. Um, it was getting busy too. And then this stuff happened. So I don't necessarily, I haven't necessarily made five grand because it's just been this year so would i still be able to apply for uh, crb benefit well, you haven't made five thousand this year but have you made it within the last 12 months or in your no. last income tax no. no so like i like this is like i just started this was something i just started to get my feet back because i i was not working for a bit because of like a disability and then I started to like get back into the working field. Unfortunately, no, you won't uh, be eligible for CERB. Okay. Uh, the, okay. Uh, although like I know you probably hope that you are and asking that question and I was hoping uh, by digging a little bit more that you would be eligible, uh, but the $5,000 rule is uh, you have to have either showed it in your last year's income tax return or you'd have to be able to show it in the new um, upcoming income tax where you've made at least that amount in the previous 12 months. And if you're okay. not able to do that, um, then, then you aren't eligible. But uh, this benefit will run, like you may become eligible. So unless you've completely shut down your business at this point and are, are going to claim you know, zero income from March onwards, um, you may become eligible eventually. Okay, and I have one more question. So I have two kids, and I, I know that they said they were going to be increasing the um, child tax benefit. Do you so, know when? Do you know when that's going to roll out, and like how that's the the pay for that is is based on? Yeah, so it's the Canada Child Benefit, the CCB, and uh, you're receiving uh, about three hundred dollars extra per child for the month of May. So whenever you're used to getting that uh, May uh, deposit into your account for the CCB, expect that May deposit to be boosted by $300 for each child. Uh, so that's not total, that's on top of your regular benefit, but it's only for the month of May, May that boost, and then you'll go back to receiving the regular amount of CCB. 
Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. And you should have received maybe a GST check uh, as well if you are were receiving um, GST credit deposit. And then for those that had moderate to low income, uh, should have seen approximately uh, anywhere between $400 for individual and uh, approximately $600 for, per couple uh, in that credit. And if you haven't and you're used to receiving it, then, then I, I would follow up with your accountant to, to see what happened with that. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, going back into the chat, we did have some questions. Uh, Carlina asked, I don't know if she's still, Carlina, are you still on? Yes, you are. I'm going to unmute you and you can go ahead and, and ask Ruby your question. Hi, I was just wondering for those of us that are eligible for CERB and are taking the, um, taking the funding, what should we be considering in terms of putting away funds for taxes come next season? I don't know if that's a question more, for, more so for an accountant, but figured I'd ask. Sorry, uh, I don't know if that was me. Everyone froze for a little bit there. You did freeze there. Um, Carlina, did you wanna just ask the question again? Yeah. So I was just wondering, in terms of those of us that are um, eligible for the CERB and are able to receive it, how much should we be considering in terms of uh, setting aside money for taxes for next year? It, it really depends, right? Because it's not going to just get taxed as your $8,000 of CERB alone. It's going to get taxed in combination with however much you continue to make in your total income for the tax year, right? So um, I think you can, you can go online and, and, and try to calculate according to what your, usually what your tax bracket is and what you're used to being taxed at. Um, but it will really depend because if you fall under a certain amount of income for the year, you may not get taxed at anything, really. You may be able to, uh, uh, to be go tax-free. So it's very difficult for me to answer that because I don't know what your total income for the year 2020 will be. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Ruby. I also have Antonia. I'm going to un unmute you um, so you can ask your question. Go ahead. Hi, Hi. Aaron answer, but I was just asking about the $1,000 um, uh, reduced income, if it was like monthly or bi-weekly, um, because myself alone have got a reduced um, income, but I'm not at the $1,000 monthly. So that was my question, I think Ms. Ruby she answered that um, but since I'm on mute as well um, I just wanted to see if the federal government is considering anything extra for not-for-profit organizations because that was one of the biggest um, concerns and questions that I had in my mind because I haven't heard so much about it for the not-for-profit sector um, I know that they are included into the business plans for emergency funds but not as specifically uh, just for not-for-profit, because I, I know some of the not-for-profit is still even doing extra work. And also volunteer, uh, volunteers that we had in not-for-profits, now they're not, they cannot volunteer because of the pandemic and all of that. So I don't know if the federal government is addressing that and how it will be addressed in the future. No, that's a great, great question. And I, I've talked to uh, a few non-for-profits and they're having a difficult time because they're used to being able to um, get their proceeds and revenues through charitable donations and uh, in-kind donations and volunteerism so uh, they're very hard up for for what they're used to and so there are talks still going on about that uh, right now what we're trying to do is include them in the wage we have included them in the wage subsidy uh, so at least their employees can continue to be paid through this period um, in terms of promoting um, people to to give to charities um, i know that not all charities have been included in this, but of course we have given a lot of money to um, homeless shelters in order to uh, try to help them out at this time. United Way was given uh, quite a lot of money through um, in order to help pro uh, provide program programming for seniors. Uh, food banks were also given um, 
uh, you know, $100 million as well. And so we're going to continue to try to help support some of the most important sectors in, in, in that realm in order to be able to help Canadians through them. But uh, in terms of uh, every single type of charity, um, I just don't know how much more we'd be able to do. I really don't know, but we are talking about maybe how to incentivize uh, donors to come out at this time. And and you saw, you know, the the great uh, concert we had last week. Uh, Canadians donated an unprecedented amounts to Canada food banks, and so we do know that they're still generous. We just have to make sure. We, we incentivize them in ways to give back to the sectors that are really in need right now. Uh, and especially your, your, the not-for-profits are being relied on heavily right now too by people. Uh, so part of the student program also was to incentivize, encourage students to go out and volunteer. Um, we know a lot of volunteers tended to be seniors um, before as well, and they are the most vulnerable. And so we're trying to encourage young people perhaps to volunteer and then they can get um, get um, uh, sorry money towards uh, their schooling uh, in the upcoming year. So that that's an incentive that's been giving given to them. Yeah, thank you. I think it, it was because uh, there are small organizations that they had to reinvent themselves as well to uh, be able to give back to the community that uh, they were helping. I work in the not-for-profit sector, so that's what I was aware of it. Um, so there's there's not so much uh, for those organizations that are still helping the community in a different form because they have to reinvent, but it's not essential. Like it's not a food bank, it's not a shelter, mm -hmm. uh, but it's still, we are providing um, uh, other ways to assist the, uh, the community, uh, especially mm -hmm. those that are at home right now. We also gave tickets online, uh, and we're going to continue, right? Like just like I said at the very beginning of this, um, it, this is not the end all of all the programs that the government will be investing in, but we're going to continue to watch closely. And I, I would say, send me an email, send your local MPs uh, an email about uh, maybe some of the recommendations you may have, and and we can pass those on. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I know that it, they have been conversations and there there is an alliance and all of that. Um, but since we have you here, but thank you for answering. Yeah. Thanks, Antonia. Okay. Um, I also see I can we can take any other questions because we have gone through all the questions in the chat. If you guys uh, have a question, just raise your hand. I see here uh, Lisa, so I'm going to unmute. Oh, Shamika, is that a hand that I see? <laughs> I kind of saw one of these like, mm. okay, I'll let Lisa go and then if, and then I'll, I'll, I'll take you next. Um, oh, wrong person. Okay, Lisa? I don't know, I had already answered. I think my hand's still up from before. Oh, so I would just, I would have to lower it. Okay, no problem. Okay, you, okay, no problem, thank you. I'm, I'm learning quite a lot about using Zoom as well every single day, uh, especially now doing presentations, but I do my committee meetings over Zoom and um, yeah, it's, it's been great. Uh, so there has been advancement in some sectors uh, and technology is definitely one of them. I think uh, I've been talking to uh, different people that are working in the banking sector and in the technology sector directly as well and they said they've made leaps and bounds in the last month or two uh, some things that they were would have just planned to do in a five-year period uh, and yet felt a little risk adverse to you know maybe take the leap they're doing it now they're investing and uh, trying to uh, do things in new ways and I think a lot of businesses are, are in the same boat and not for profit sector as well trying to innovate and learn new ways of, of doing things and so um, I think we're, we're going to see some changes that are going to be tough, but we're also going to see some things that are exciting that come out of this. I agree. Um, I, I managed to, cap, to catch a little bit of your live yesterday. So I think you did a very, a very good job. And um, I think you, you were going live with somebody else and you're like, oh, I'm not too sure. But you did excellent. So um, I'm also too learning some of the, the newer functions. Uh, Rob actually just shared with me a hands up feature. So I just learned it right now as well. <laughs> Um, okay, Shamika, I'm going to unmute you now so that you can go ahead and ask your question. 
I thought you guys meant literally hands up, but I'll also. <laughs> um, so I have like a bit, I'm more like student bound here. So the first question I wanted to ask was for students, um, does it matter what kind of fin um, uh, post education, post secondary education they're going to, whether it be private or Ontario, like, um, like the more well known Ontario colleges, or are all schools covered? All schools are covered as far as I'm aware. Okay, and if you you had talked about the jobs for students, it was about I think you said seventy six hundred or seventy six thousand. Yeah. Um, so the different uh, industry, well, ministries are working on creating that with industries. So that's okay. a, a ballpark number that was provided, okay. to us and, and that's their target. And so um, you will be able to come. If you go to, I don't think Service can, I mean, Canada.ca have it up yet, uh, but come very soon. They do have some of the student program up, but not all of it. Hold on, let me just. Did you say Canada.ca? Canada.ca. That's where you should go for all of your questions. So if you ever have questions and you see something on social media, uh, go and verify it on Canada.ca. <laughs> At the very top of the page uh, is all the COVID support. So just click on COVID supports and a list just comes up and you can click into business, youth, seniors, um, uh, everything, sectors, different sectors and the support that's available for them. Uh, and it will also connect you to the applications for certain things as well. So uh, it's all there in one spot. Uh, if you're looking for COVID specific information and you hear of something, and like I cannot stress enough that you need to go there to verify it um, yeah. and not everything might be on here some stuff might be provincial the province did do um, they are involved with this uh, commercial rent subsidy with us uh, so that's in partnership with the province um, the top up for essential workers that was announced a couple of days ago the four for um, four dollars extra per hour yeah. And then the 250, I think, lump sum that's also uh, that they're eligible for. That was only for certain uh, workers, and all of that stuff should be on Ontario.ca because that's a um, yes, we fund helped fund that program, but uh, the decision of who was going who it was going to be applied to that was made by uh, the province. Okay, and then my last student kind of related question is. Um, so the the five thousand dollars that's going to be granted to them if they do any volunteer work mm -hmm. um should they not work at all as well or should they also try to obtain it's uh it's it's on top of each other so yeah. you can get uh the, the the grant as well and you can work as well we're trying to incentivize oh, people to to do that so um you can get the c uh what is it the cesb the student benefit and you can volunteering at the same time uh, where you're not getting any income um, and then that you would get up to five thousand dollars of a student grant for um, you could also be working and then also be volunteering on the side and also get that so uh, all of these programs are designed to help motivate students uh, because okay. they're and you know some criticism also uh, and I think it's fair uh, in saying that we don't want to disincentivize people uh, from from helping and uh, and from working if if of course their job is something that they can do safely okay mm -hmm. well thank you so much Ms. so I appreciate it no problem there'll be more information on that program and in, in, in when it passes because it's going through the Senate so maybe if you check back on Monday all the information should be there Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so we had um, Priya, who she joined She joined in a little bit late, um, but she was one of the questions that were on the slide. So I'm going to give her the opportunity to ask her question. Hi, Priya. Oh, there we go. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Perfect. Um, so, uh, hi Ruby, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to know from what I understand CERB is for uh, those who have already filed the taxes, who have been filing or who filed from last year. So my case in particular, uh, like I started just my business last year. So I will be filing my first taxes uh, for 2019 this year. So 
is there anything for uh, new owner business owners like i've invested thousands of dollars finishing a studio for myself um, i'm an artist i had signed up for a lot of events uh, for these months which are all obviously postponed now and some cancelled so there's a lot of investment done but uh, um i don't think that i in current scenario i can apply for any of those well, the CERB is not really for businesses. Like it's not for your business return. And if you're, you could still be eligible. It really depends on your personal income tax return. So did you file a personal income tax return last year or, or your? The household, you mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, for yourself, were you, was it just by household? Do you mean you have, you have a spouse or a partner that filed, um, made it income? I was not doing any uh, job or business uh, before uh, last year. So I, my husband was in a job and he, uh, of course, filed his taxes. Uh, but I wasn't doing anything before. So I just started uh, last year. Okay. Um, I would contact uh, Service Canada if you do feel in the prior 12 months you have made $5,000 of personal income. Uh, have you, do you think you've made $5,000 of personal income in the prior 12 months, even if you haven't filed last year? Uh, not yet. Then, then you're not eligible. Okay. So in, that is either way you slice it, you're not eligible. It, even, yeah. Okay. Uh, so someone who started new uh, and haven't hit 5000 but they have made much more expenses. So don't, is there... Can you propose something like uh, some sort of grant to be given that way? You can go to the banks. A lot of credit has been opened up. I, I suggest you contact BDC, contact your local bank to see what kind of credit lines uh, and supports may be offered to you there. Did you have a payroll? No, it's my uh, self, uh, like it's my own business. Okay, so you don't pay, there's no other staff that you have? No. Okay. Um, and unfortunately, like I did say, there were, were those businesses that did open up uh, just in the weeks prior to this happening. Um, unfortunately, they, they are not covered in this. You do have expenses, I do understand that. You have put up a lot of money, um, but you also were not used to having any income coming in uh, other than just very recently. Uh, so the programs have been designed for those that were already set up um, and were making income and, and were working. Uh, so I will take your feedback back uh, if there is a way where supports can be provided, but uh, we also have to be very mindful of designing these programs so that uh, there's not abuse of the programs. And right. <laughs> a lot of abuse and I'm hearing of that as well right now right that that was my point like um because uh, we are not yes i was not getting that income before but i also did not have all this money invested in the business before which is more and and your sp spouses are also you know he's uh, uh, barely getting any money he was supporting all my expenses so far but now that he's uh laid off so that's like it's from both ends we are he's not eligible and i'm not eligible yeah i he's eligible for cerb I, I if he's been laid off then he would be eligible um i know that doesn't probably cover the expenses you probably have created now at this point uh and i'll definitely take your feedback i hear some kids in the background you will yeah, sorry about that <laughs> No, no, no. I, I was going to say you would get um, your CCB uh, topped off this month if you do. If you are somebody who receives the Canada Child Benefit, then then that will be a little bit of a boost to you this year um, or this month. But uh, I'll take that back. And and you do need to establish a relationship with your bank. So uh, if you have your business account with your bank, please reach and contact them. Uh, and and see what kind of supports you might still be eligible for. Oh, she's muted. Sorry, Priya. Sorry, and I have one more question if we have time for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
All right. So um, I have read in uh, on social media uh, that Toronto is uh, is allocating hundred thousand for the um, artist community. Um, so I was wondering if Brampton has any plans to do something like that. All right. You were saying you you are an artist yourself, or that's right. Um, I can maybe if you can email me. Uh, I can send you any supports that I can find. I actually don't have that answer for you, really. Sure, uh, I will email it to you. Yeah, I'll get that answer to you as to maybe what things you can link into. Sure, I'll do that. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Priya. Okay, and I see, um, I'm going to lower the hand. I see, Lisa, your hand is up again. Um, I'm going to unmute her, but I don't, I, I lowered it, so I'm not too sure. <laughs> Lisa? Yes, no, I did put my hand up again. I had another <laughs> question in okay. regards to students. I, I am enrolled in some course online courses with those uh, with those I mean uh, apply to the student benefit. Uh, let me so what would you what kind of a student would you be? Would you would you be a part-time student or a full-time student? Part-time. Part-time student. Um, I, let's see, let me just double check. I do believe. Like would a life coaching uh, course and a like a yoga course online be eligible as a student? It's a continuing education, continuing education courses. Yeah. Um, benefit would have four eligible students per month eligible students with dependents reason. Hmm. The benefit is pending the passage of legislation. And so, okay, that detail is not currently available. Um, and that's why there's some nuances I have looked into already, but part-time versus full-time student, uh, uh, I believe as long as you're a student, you, you would be eligible for this. I don't think they're going to, um, start making all of that criteria. But once again, when the legislation has fully passed the Senate, uh, I might have some answers for you there. So check back on Canada.ca, um, perhaps on Monday. Uh, and basically where you would go is you would just go to supports for individuals and the supports for students would pop up under that and you can uh, just click it and it should have further details there for you by Monday. Perfect, thank you so much. Thank you, Lisa. Does anybody else have any other questions before we um, wrap this up? I see no hands. Okay. <laughs> so I think we've been able to, to satisfy all the questions currently. So thank you so much, Ruby. I'm going to switch the, to the last slide because there is some information that I'd like to share. Um, there, it's her, sorry, I, I just have the screen of everybody on here and I'm trying to so um, I know Karen Gill, ha, um, who is Ruby's executive assistant, she had um, provided, if you guys are not, I know the majority of you are from uh, locally from Brampton, but if you want to know more about your resources within your riding or your area, I would highly encourage that you go over to um, that website and then just plug in your postal code to see who your member of parliament is to ask any questions related to just specifically your area. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Ruby. No, absolutely. That's what you should be doing. Um, we're happy to answer as many questions as possible, but I only have the same resources at my disposal that other members of parliament do. And so uh, that's why it would be helpful if each person went to their member of parliament in terms of staff and, and physical, you know, uh, human capacity. And so if we get overwhelmed, then we won't be able to serve uh, the constituents that live in, in my riding of Brampton North. And so uh, as much as we will direct you in the right uh, place, try to reach out to your member. They're also more invested in building a relationship with you, getting to know you and getting to uh, wanting to answer your questions because obviously you're, you're a potential voter for them and uh, they want to make sure they, they build that bridge with you, right? So uh, it's very important. And uh, like we said, uh, service, uh, Canada.ca or Ontario.ca, those are your sources uh, for this information. And I know that for Brampton, you can go to the City of Brampton website as well, and, and there's 
a wealth of material on there too. Uh, Karen just added on, on the chat and I'm going to um, reread it. She says, uh, your office also sends out weekly information and support small business emails, which I receive as well. Um, if any of you guys want to subscribe to that, just send an email to uh, ruby.sahoda, which is the email that you see on there. It's ruby.sahoda at parl dot gc dot ca and then you guys can get added to the distribution list um, aside from that i there was a comment here from tiffany and she says thank you very much for all of this great information um, she appreciates all the effort and the options provided by the government that are continually adapting to include for more for more people and to help out more more people she said, in light of this pandemic, I am incredibly grateful to be in this country. And I think that that's something that uh, resonates with a lot of us here. I would have to say that I'm, I've never been more proud to be a part of Brampton and to say, hey, I live in Brampton. And I'm, you guys are doing a phenomenal job. Um, and we, I, I should unmute everybody because I shouldn't be speaking for everyone. But uh, I will say thank you so much on everyone's behalf for taking the time once again to answer our questions. And um, we look forward to having you come back once again and hopefully give keep us updated with anything else that rolls out. Um, again, if there's anything else that you guys may need, um, email Ruby directly and um, Karen will be in contact with you guys as well. And I'll also be sending out a wrap up email which will include uh, the recording, along with just key highlights of uh, what Ruby's shared, and also, um, e uh, sorry, some resources and links from an email that she sent out to me as well, which I'm pretty certain is um, what you send out on a weekly basis. So, um, yeah, besides that, oh, there's a couple of messages coming in here, and it's everybody saying thank you, Jennifer. I just want to thank everyone as well. Um, I want to thank my assistant Karen as well and all my staff. They've been uh, an amazing support to me through this time and the community has been as well by giving me feedback so that I can take it to my daily meetings uh, and raise uh, these concerns with uh, the ministers and with the prime minister as well. This has been a very tough time on government. Uh, it's been you know, us trying to achieve and roll out policies in weeks when we usually have years to do these types of things. And so uh, we're, you know, everything's not going to be perfect in, in the first uh, go. Uh, we're trying to adapt and we're trying to make things uh, as user friendly and as, as simple as possible. But I know that uh, it can be all very overwhelming at this time and I really just want to make sure that uh, I hope that you're all in good health and uh, uh, your spirits are remaining high because uh, mental health and a lot of other issues around anxiety and depression are going to be um, really important for us to look out for and uh, look out for our family members and our friends uh, and, and reach out to them in ways that perhaps uh, we can't do in, in the regular way anymore but reach out call them uh, try to touch base with a lot of people and I think together uh, there's been a lot of silver linings to this as well we've you know gotten to spend more time uh, with our families um, I have gotten to learn how to um, engage with my community in different ways and ways that I'm not used to and so there's been a lot of learning and I think that's going to improve us uh, for the long run so although it's going to be hard um, the thing is, it's going to be hard on a lot of people, and uh, we got to keep, 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 keep in mind um, the the good things that we do have, uh, and then try to help those that are really in need. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ruby. Thanks for everybody who participated. Uh, wait out on the emails, and I hope you guys have a fabulous rest of the Friday. Thank you, Thanks, you guys. Oh wait, hold on, hold on. Sorry. I see some hands going up. Rob? Oh, he's clapping. Oh, it's a clapping. <laughs> yes. okay, awesome. Thanks, guys. Bye. Take care. <laughs>